Good morning. morning. Join us uh, or join me in this responsive greeting this morning. May the same spirit that brought life from the waters of creation come and renew us now. Happy Pentecost Sunday. It is the day you'll hear a lot about the Holy Spirit coming upon the church, giving all the gifts that she has. And so we'll be hearing that. And so that is why we begin in a word inviting Spirit's presence in our midst this day. Jim Bohm has already invited us into worship well. Tom Lafferty will help cue our congregational singing. Deb Haynes is our liturgist helping us to hear the word of God. And I'm Pastor Janelle Kurtz, and I'm glad to be back with you this week. Uh, There are a number of announcements that are on the back of your bulletin that I would invite you to be attentive to. One that may be new to you, um, although our church council members have known about it and saved the date, uh, May 25th is an all-church spring cleanup day. We understand it is Memorial Day weekend, but a number of folks said they were still going to be here. So we're going to see who can come and do a little bit around the church to get it all cleaned up, a delayed spring cleaning, and we would invite you to join us that Saturday at 9 a.m. You'll also see information about the upcoming hike, about upcoming Pride, uh, First Snohomish Pride, and how we can participate in that. Uh, June 2nd is our retirement and farewell celebration to Lorraine. Uh, I will hopefully be announcing quite soon to you. I think we have someone who has said yes, who we have interviewed and has said yes to the position. So I'll be able to introduce her to you shortly. Um, But we celebrate that. And then the United Methodist Women or United Women in Faith events, which are open to all women in our congregation and community. So we invite you to join in the no host lunch and the tea, which are coming up. There are lots of things to attend to because there are lots of ways that we are the church body apart from how we gather. And yet we gather and worship because this is a space where we come one to another to be open to God and each other and to let spirits presence and leading shape us, form us in where we're going. And so we know that we come into this space with all kinds of things thoughts and experiences and circumstances from the week. And as we gather here, I invite you to pause before we continue. Breathe in the Spirit's presence and allow ourselves to be here, noticing where God is already meeting us. Surely the presence of the Lord is already in this place. I invite you to respond in worship in the way that is best for you. Let us rise and body or spirit for our call to worship. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Where once the valley and bones were dry, spirit rattled in their midst to make them live anew. Where once morning cries covered dreamers' dreams, spirit unleashed a new vision and praise rang free. This is truly a new day marked by the spirit's holy imagination. Spirit, come, recreate, and make us new too. You will now join in the opening hymn, number 2117, In the Faith We Sing, and on the screen.
me in a spirit of prayer. Ever creating God, Christ our Redeemer and friend, Holy Spirit our advocate, come and move in our midst again today. You cast a vision for the hope of creation and invite us into it. Inspire us with, your create, with the creativity of your spirit's movement so that we would be those who dream your dream for then we can add our witness to your unfolding story of grace. Amen. You may be seated. This morning we hear a vision from the prophet Ezekiel. It is a vision of new life that God's spirit makes possible. Hear this story of the valley of the dry bones as told in Ezekiel 37. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and will cause flesh to, to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, Suddenly, there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, 
and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the God when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you and you shall live. And I will place on you your own soil, place you, uh, place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. These are holy words for all God's people. Thanks be to God. And the children may come forward for Children's Church. Let's try that. Is that working better? Yeah. Yes. Ah, ha, ha. Okay. There we go. Let me get my chair. Uh, did you bring anything else with you? Can you go get that too? Thank you. Ah, all right. Let me get one other thing. You hold on to that or put that there. That's great. Okay. Ooh, now I hear it working. It's like wind. Hi, good morning. Um, I need your help with something today. Do you have any guesses? What did I ask you to bring from home? Party hats. What color do you want? Silver? Okay. Does, uh, I, have, I, have a, I have enough. Does anyone else want a party hat? <laughs> All right. Here, you take, the, you take silver. I am going to take red. Okay. Let's put on our party hats because it is a party. Did you know that? No. Do you know what today is? Today is called Pentecost. Have you ever heard of Pentecost? Mm, I know. I like when you make that face, which means definitely not. All right, so you might have noticed things are different. It's all red in here. That's because for Pentecost, that's a day when the Holy Spirit comes down upon the church in a brand new way. Holy Spirit's always been doing things. But this is a new way that the Holy Spirit comes, and then suddenly people are able to speak in brand new languages and tell the good news about Jesus in new languages. And we celebrate Pentecost as the birthday of the church. That's why I needed your help with the party hats. But we also better get ready. All right. Can you help me put this up? We're going to put this on here. Let's see. It's the birthday of the church. We better get ready for it. All right. Ready? You bring that over here. Now, I, didn't, I didn't measure this yet, so we're going to, you know, decorate together as it goes. Ooh, is it one big sign? All right, perfect. Happy birthday. All right. Oh, that'll work great. I'm going to hold it up there a second. Right, I got a little tape right here. That should hopefully stay. I'll do some tape over here. All right. You want to do it? Okay, you do that. Great. All right. Happy birthday, church. Put out the party hats since no one else wanted them. Just put some out. I'll put some out. 
here? Okay. Uh, what else would we normally have for a party? What other kinds of things? Cake and ice cream. We would. We would have cake and ice cream. And what would we do if it's a birthday party? What would we normally put on the cake? Sprinkles. Okay. What else? Frosting. What else? Something we only usually do for candles. And so we have the candles up there. I didn't bring a candle because I was a little unsure about having open flame right here. But so when we even think about the candles in the Pentecost story, uh, the spirit comes down kind of like a flame of fire. It doesn't burn. It just gives people new gifts. So in the story, the spirit gives us gifts, brings the fire, all the things we need for a birthday. Um, also have balloons. Okay, want to pick some? All right, can you blow these up? You can pick, uh, let's blow up a balloon or two. And did you know that uh, the Holy Spirit is also thought of as kind of like a wind, a breath? Maybe you heard it in that story. The breath came from the four corners of the world <laughs> to bring new life. All right, you keep working on that. It's tricky. Whew, you gonna do it? Or you want me to do a couple? <laughs> You're trying awfully hard. You can keep trying if you want, otherwise I'll keep doing a few others for us though. So the wind is kind of, the Holy Spirit is also imagined like a wind, it's imagined like a fire. And when we talk about the Holy Spirit, we also refer to the Holy Spirit as she. As part of God, uh, but the, the spirit is also thought of as wisdom, and her, her, she is given the name Sophia. You, maybe you know anyone. Do you know anyone named Sophia? Yeah. I'm guessing it's a girl in your class, right? So Sophia, wisdom. And so when we talk about Holy Spirit, you might, have, you might hear it in some of our songs. We use she language. Can I, can I take that one over for you, or are you going to keep at it? Can I do a different blue one? Great. Because I'm going to let you keep that one. Yeah, you just keep that one. You don't have to keep blowing it up. Yeah. There you go. You got it, you got it, you got it. Don't give up now. There you go. Oh! Sometimes this is what it's like with spirit. Sometimes it's a lot of false starts before we really get it off the ground. All right. You're going you're gonna to keep working at it? Um, since, since it's like red and orange, I'm going to do two more to get Hey! I love this. And you know what? You celebrate in community, so that's why everyone's celebrating with you. I will tie it for you. I'm going to hold this. You've done your good work. Yeah, that's enough. Whew. All right. Take a deep breath of spirit. <sighs> All right. Um, I also brought... Uh, I, I, we like noisemakers at our parties. If you go right next to where I'm sitting, do you see the rain stick that I used before? Can you bring that over? Okay. Will you give it a turn? Nice. So it's kind of like we often we use different instruments to celebrate when we're having a party. We might do that. Um, I don't know if you heard it. I used the rain stick during the reading. Some of you did. I'm not sure how well it picked up. Because when the spirit came and rattled bone upon bone with new life, spirit does amazing things. And I think we can celebrate spirit with all the senses that we have. All right, this looks like a pretty good party. Can you put the rain stick right here? I'm going to use it a little later, too, so I want to be able to reach it. Yes. And this came to, this is a, uh, I will be Sawyer are letting me borrow this for today so that we can use it as part of worship. All right. What do you think? Does it look ready for a party now? Anyone else want a party hat? Oh, Alice does. Do you have a, do you have a color preference? Choose one. Will you choose a color for Alice? Take it to her. All right. She's on the run. Alice is ready to join the party. Yes. Okay. So you know what we should probably do? Sing happy birthday. Let's sing happy birthday to the church and then we'll say a prayer. So we'll say, uh, 
to the, we're going to say to the church, because it's not just the United Methodist Church, it's church everywhere. So we're going to say church. Ready? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear church. Happy birthday to you. And many more. There we go. All right. Thank you for helping us celebrate and get ready for the birthday. We're celebrating the birthday of the church. That's pretty amazing, right? Yes. All right. Let's say a prayer. Dear God, thank you for the Holy Spirit. It comes in so many ways to give us wisdom, to give us new ways to share about you, and just to come and celebrate uh, in community, to be glad for all the good things you're doing. Thank you for coming and forming the church. Thank you for still leading the church. Help us to follow well. Amen. Thank you so much, Sasha. You can go ahead back to Sunday school. I think you're making some wind chimes related to wind and spirit. All right. Scripture reading today is from Acts 2, 1 through 21. While Jesus was still with the disciples, he promised them an advocate, that an advocate would come and help them fulfill their gospel work. That advocate is the Holy Spirit, the same who rattled new life in the valley of Ezekiel's vision. Hear now this Pentecost story from Acts chapter 2. When Pentecost Day arrived, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound from heaven like the howling of a fierce wind filled the entire house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be individual flames of fire alighting on each one of them. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit enabled them to speak. There were pious Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. When they heard this sound, a crowd gathered. They were mystified because everyone heard them speaking in their native languages. They were surprised and amazed, saying, look, aren't all these people who are speaking Galileans? Every one of them. How then can each of us hear them speaking in our native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, as well as residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia. Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and all the regions of Libya bordering Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them declaring the mighty works of God in their, our own languages. They were so, all surprised and bewildered. Some asked each other, what does this mean? Others jeered at them saying, they're full of new wine. Peter stood with the other 11 apostles. He raised his voice and declared, Judeans and everyone living in Jerusalem, know this, listen carefully to my words. These people aren't drunk as you suspect after all. It's only nine o'clock in the morning. Rather, this is what was spoken to the prophet, prophet Joel. In the, last <clears throat> in the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young will see visions. Your elders will dream dreams. Even upon my servants, men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. I will cause wonders to occur in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and a cloud of smoke. The sun will be changed into darkness and the moon will be changed into blood before the great and spectacular day of the Lord comes, and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. These are holy words for all God's people. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
The other thing that I forgot to tell Sasha, and I have my hat off because it was choking me mightily, uh, but the thing I was going to tell her was that the party hats, too, are kind of symbolic uh, for when the spirit came and alighted upon each one of them. And so if that changes your decision later to take or keep on your hat, very, very good. Well, my friends, uh, let, us, let us pray as we begin, or as I share this morning. Holy Spirit, who comes with wisdom, come and be present in this space in the speaking and in the hearing, that we would witness to the good news you have in store for us and are already bringing forth. Amen. Like so many others, two Fridays ago, do you remember two Fridays ago? Two Friday, okay, some of you are like, no, I don't remember yesterday. Two Fridays ago, which I'm with you, two Fridays ago was the day when the Northern Lights appeared. And so like so many others, I joined the crowd of people eagerly looking at the night sky. I had heard about it early in the day, and so as soon as the sun even started to set, I ran outside. I mean, the sky wasn't even dark yet, but I was so excited. I ran outside, and I looked up. And I squinted, and I looked, and I looked, and I looked, and I went back inside because I said, it's not dark yet, Janelle, what are you thinking? And then I went back as soon as it was dark. And again, I was so excited. I ran out without any shoes. I like gingerly hopped over the gravel to get to the clear spot in the backyard. And I squinted up. I turned myself away from the city lights. And I looked and I strained to see something. And at first, I saw what on any other night I would have thought was just the whisper of a cloud. But this day, I knew was different. Oh, this is the very first picture that I took. Can you see it? Can you even see it in the picture? Maybe. So this is the first picture that I took. And I squinted and I strained and I thought that little wispy thing, I thought it might have been a cloud, right? Because remember, the camera sees it far better than our eyes do. But I knew something was different about this day. So I was still getting Sasha ready for bed, so I went back inside and I patiently waited. And as soon as she was down for the night, I just stayed outside. I grabbed my keys and my phone and shoes, shoes this time. And I looked at the sky until I knew for sure there was something there. And I went, this picture I took later, I went off in search in search of darker skies and a better view. So I drove 10 minutes north to Highball Lookout, and at first it was still, it was about 10, 15, there was still just like a little glimmer of something that you might have thought was haze. And I waited, and I waited, and I joined the crowd, and I listened as some people were like, this is it, this is why I came out late at night. And I listened as some people were like, well, I'm going to try this other place instead. And 10 minutes after that group left, This is what the sky did. And it was so vibrant that you could see it. I mean, of course, again, the camera picks it up better than we do. But I could still see it. I could see the greens dancing. I could see the purples. I could see the sort of center where it almost appeared to be swirling around. I stayed out until almost midnight that night. I was just so giddy with wonder and awe at it. And I listened as people around me We're excited and taking it in. And where I was at Highbulb Lookout, I heard people speaking a variety of languages. There were some that I recognized. I heard folks in English. I heard folks in Spanish. I heard folks in either Ukrainian or Russian. I don't know them well enough to know which it was. Maybe both. I heard an Indian dialect by a group of folks who were standing taking photos. And across the languages, I heard the awe and the excitement and the phenomena of this night. But I was thinking about the folks, too. Some, and no judgment on it, there were some who simply chose to sleep. And there were some who grew impatient early on and left. And I was thinking about that story. I was thinking about my own experience of this night. And I was reflecting a bit on our Pentecost stories. 
In part because when I think of the Pentecost stories, when I think of Ezekiel, the prophecy of Spirit coming on the dry bones, when I think of Acts 2, Holy Spirit coming like a fire upon the folks, I imagine them as this cosmic wonder. These are cosmic stories. So in my mind, there was a clear connection in how I imagine spirit anyways, cosmic phenomena that kind of catch us up in their glory, in their wonder, beyond what we might imagine. But I was also thinking about it, and I was thinking about the intentionality of that night for those who witnessed it. When I got to High Bulb Lookout, there were people who had like brought whole, a whole setup. There were folks with their tripods and their cameras, and there was someone who had this like great inflatable, comfortable thing you could lay on the ground so you didn't have to crane your head the whole night, but could still be comfortable. There were folks who came prepared. I saw people with telescopes, people willing to just stay staring at the night sky, believing that that little bit of haze might become something more. And it strikes me that this is what Pentecost is about, an intentionality to believe and stay with the hope and the promise of God long enough to see it break wide open in our midst and to be part of it. In Acts 2, or in Ezekiel, I want to start with Ezekiel, in Ezekiel, there is this vision of the valley of the dry bones, sun-bleached bones all around. And God asks, can they live? And Ezekiel responds, only you know. But then God says, prophesy. Prophesy to the breath, to the spirit an invitation, I think, to see what spirit can do. But remember, spirit had to travel from the farthest corners of the, of the world to come. And I imagine Ezekiel there in those dry, in that dry valley and the dry bones all around him. And I imagine him craning his ear, straining his eyes, listening for the very first rattle the very first one ready to catch it, to see what it is God can yet do. I don't imagine it was instantaneous that those dry bones got up, leapt up, sinew filled them, breath filled them. Ezekiel had to stay in the valley and dare to hope in what God's promise could bring until finally it came like a whooshing, a rattling of bone upon bone, and new life emerged. I wonder if there were moments he was a little bit impatient, if there were moments when hope wavered, and he stays with the vision, with the valley prophesying, come, come, O breath. In the story of Acts, we have again characters who it is a gift of spirit in all of it. Spirit will go where spirit will go. And spirit alights on all those spirit alights upon. And there are those who begin immediately speaking the praise of God in new-to-them languages. But you remember we kind of laugh a little at some of the characters who just can't receive it, who can't understand what it is yet. Those who are scoffing and dismissive, what is this nonsense? It's nonsense what they're speaking. There's an intentionality for those who receive the gift of the Spirit to receive it with an openness and a willingness and a persistence to stay with it. To see what good thing it would bring forth. I was thinking about that night, that was two Fridays ago. I went in and out, in and out, 
so eager, so determined, even when all I thought I saw was the faintest whisper of a cloud. I dared to dream it was something else, in part because people wiser than I had told me it would be, and it was. <coughs> Pentecost is that time when we are invited to remember that spirit is still unleashed in many wild and wonderful ways upon us. No matter what it is that the world, or the wider world around us might tell us. The next morning, uh, part of the reason I went home, besides being tired, it was midnight, but Sasha had a theater performance. She'd been doing this musical theater class and the next day was her showcase. And so I didn't want to be too tired to appreciate her showcase. And so one of the songs that she was singing comes from the Disney movie uh, Frozen 2. And it's the very first song of the movie. It's called Into the Unknown. I, I might have referenced it before. But in the movie, it's based off of this idea that Elsa, who's Queen Elsa, one of the main characters, she hears something. And I'm going to refer to that something as spirit for the cases of our, of our day. She is hearing something call to her. A spirit calling, inviting her into something more. And the first song she sings is a song about her own wrestling with whether or not she will choose to follow. And so I listened and I watched as the kids gave this really emphatic, dramatic performance of the song. It goes like this. I can hear you, but I won't. Some look for troubles while others don't. There's a thousand reasons I should go about my day and ignore your whispers that I wish would go away. Oh, oh. I can't go that high, but the kids can. You're not a voice. You're just a ringing in my ear, and if I heard you, which I don't, I'm spoken for, I fear. Everyone I've ever loved is here within these walls. I'm sorry, secret siren, but I'm blocking out your calls. I've had my adventure. I don't need something new. I'm afraid of what I'm risking if I follow you into the unknown. And then it repeats into the unknown. It'd be a really boring movie if it ended right there. If Elsa was like, great, I don't hear you. I'm going to ignore you. I'm not going to listen. I'm going to stay put. And yet the story unfolds where Elsa eventually listens to the calling. She is willing to follow, is willing to see beyond all of the very good reasons she has for staying put for doing what she's done, but she risks going into the unknown. And of course, as a Disney movie, she finds something far beyond what she imagined. Pentecost is the story of the spirits calling to us, inviting us to have the same posture of openness that is willing to listen to the voice that calls, to the rattling of dry bones, longing to bring new life. It is an invitation to listen to the voices in different languages, new to us languages, calling us to receive the praise of God in a new way. It's calling us to see that the whisper that we might otherwise think is just an ordinary hazy cloud could be something phenomenal could be something more if we will stay with it, if we will hold the hope, if we will lean in and be open and curious and willing to seek better vantage points, darker skies, going prepared with all the things we need to receive it. Pentecost is an invitation to the same openness, to wonder beyond what our own imaginations have always told us. 
and is an invitation to have the same generosity of spirit to share a glimpse of God's kingdom in many languages and voices and experiences with neighbors and strangers and friends. Poet and pastor Steve Garnis Holmes, he wrote a poem about Pentecost, and this is what he wrote. Pentecost was not, as some say, the, quote, undoing of Babel. Now we all speak the same language. No, it was the opposite of that. It was the blessing of Babel. That we learn one another's languages. That we embrace diversity and learn to listen to each other to see from another's perspective, to give voice to a life other than our own, to make central a language that's not our own, to communicate grace that's not on our own terms. I love that line, communicating grace not on our own terms. We acknowledge the difference in our lives. We honor another's various home places and cultures. We cross the boundaries of comfort and familiarity. What Elsa might say, we go into the unknown. On that Pentecost day, I don't imagine they were eloquent. They spoke in halting Phrygian, mangled Mesopotamian. It probably took some back and forth, some double checking. It required not just proclaiming, but listening, relating, patience on the part of the hearers, courage and humility on the part of the speakers, willingness to be beginners, to risk and to appear foolish, to forego the safety of being in the dominant group. I would add it took openness, to the unknown of what could be. Going out into the darkness of night in the hope of what would be. So pray for such humility and courage, to risk for the sake of love, to be foolish for the sake of relating, to let others, people's reality be real. And in such loving, the Holy Spirit will speak loud and clear. In such loving, the Holy Spirit will speak loud and clear. The trick for us, the invitation for us at Pentecost, is to be willing to listen for that. Even when it shows up in ways we wouldn't expect or imagine, in languages that are not familiar to us, experiences that are not our own. It is an invitation in the deepest, driest, bone-filled valleys of life to crane our ears and listen. To catch the first rattling of bone upon bone of new life longing to be. As Acts tells it, it is in the busiest city centers of our lives to dare to raise our eyes from the sidewalks, to see the flame of the Spirit alight, and to listen and linger for voices not our own, for the language of grace spoken not on our own terms. It is to go in the darkest, deepest of night to better vantage points and look out seeking searching the hope of God coming to pass. And to be those willing to point it out in the darkness, to say, there it is, the praise and the hope of God. Let spirit dance and reveal new lights shimmering in the holy imagination of God. Let Pentecost fill us with new dreams, with new visions of beloved community that will yet be. Dear church, the sound of the Spirit rattles around us. My invitation to us this day that Spirit invites is that we would listen and receive. We would seek it out. We would risk following into the unknown 
where the beautiful kingdom of God waits to be revealed. An awe-inspiring phenomena that catches us up in the beauty and wonder of it. So my friends, let us go this day. As the poet says, with courage and humility, to speak and proclaim the good news, with patience to listen, and with the assurance that God's grace is breaking free and it's not always on our own terms. And that is really good news. Thanks be to God. Amen. I invite us to join in singing, Father, we have heard you calling. It is the insert in your bulletin. I invite you to stand and join in singing. be seated. I'm even going to invite our ushers to be seated. I have a quick video to show you, so you may want to sit for that part. My hat is back on. 
And my hat is back on because uh, while we celebrate Pentecost, there are a number of folks who have also named that there is a new day in the life of the United Methodist Church on the other side of our general conference. And so I want to uh, take a moment to offer you this word from our bishop, a video that speaks about general conference and how it impacts us here and now. So I invite you to receive this too. Greetings, greater Northwest area. I am so happy to be back in the area after General Conference. By now, you may be aware of many historic accomplishments of General Conference. You may also be wondering what any or all of it means for us. There's so much to unpack and we have time to do that. For now, I wish to highlight a few things that will be before us as we prepare for annual conference sessions and life beyond. First, I celebrate the collective will of the General Conference delegates to approve removal of the language that caused so much harm to LGBTQIA siblings and allies. That was the answer to many prayers and a balm for many souls. In the wake of that change that's already in effect, we must take note that those who are not in support of that change may feel vulnerable, left out, or concerned about the future of the church. I understand that, and that's why it's imperative that we ensure that when we say the United Methodist Church is a church for all, that we mean all. So no one is expected and no one will be bullied into doing anything that contradicts their convictions and values. The removal of the prohibitions and harmful language really gets us to a neutral point. No one is being penalized and no one is bound to discriminate. Second, the approval of the revised social principles allows us to have global conversations and perspectives on what matters around the world. We are not to be dominated by US centric ideas and principles. Our social principles are global in nature and much more inclusive of a broader perspective. Regionalization was a major topic before the delegates. It was approved and regionalization will require ratification of several constitutional amendments. And that process will take some time to complete because all annual conferences around the world must vote on it. And the threshold of two thirds of the aggregate of all voting is needed to approve constitutional amendments. Delegates approved sacramental rights for deacons. They approved a compass retirement plan and closed the CRSP plan. We approved full communion with the Moravian Church and the Episcopal Church. We did not approve many of the petitions related to voting and membership rights for local pastors. We referred several petitions related to the Office of Bishop and formulas related to budgeting. One matter that will linger with us is the Judicial Council decision pertaining to the authority of the Interjurisdictional Episcopacy Committee. That committee is comprised of members of the five Jurisdictional Episcopacy Committees. That's the group tasked with figuring out how the 32 approved bishops will be distributed and assigned across the United States. The Interjurisdictional Episcopacy Committee proposed no new elections and the General Conference approved that recommendation. The Western jurisdiction is allotted five bishops. Two of the current active bishops will retire in August and the work between now and the Jurisdictional Conference in July will involve a process to determine which bishops from other jurisdictions are willing to serve in the West. The bishop must agree, the sending jurisdiction must agree, the receiving jurisdiction must agree. There are many unanswered questions regarding how the five Western jurisdiction Episcopal areas will be assigned. But all in all, the spirit of General Conference was prayerful and calm. There were tears shed for many reasons. Some celebrated the election of the first African-American woman to serve as president of the Council of Bishops. We elected our very own Lori Day of the Oregon-Idaho Conference as a member of Judicial Council. Our delegates were active participants every day. They worked in close collaboration with the other delegations from the West and beyond. 
They prayed together and took care of one another. I am grateful for all the work that went into making General Conference work for the good of the whole. It was not perfect but I can see how it is moving us toward perfection. I'm grateful for all the legislation that was considered, but friends, legislation is not the work. Our work begins now. Our work begins with us bending our knees in prayer, calling out to God and leaning into one another. Our work begins by making disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world through vital and relevant worship, active discipleship formation, and direct engagement in our ministry context. We must pay attention to those outside the church. Truth is, we've given 52 years to our internal strife and struggles. Might we give the next 52 weeks to matters beyond ourselves? We can work to make the United Methodist Church a safe and welcoming place for all God's beloved. We can invest in ministry that matters so that health and housing are priorities for all. We can consider what it means to serve beyond or outside our context. We can lift up the ministry of laity and affirm that all are called to serve. We can continue the work of eliminating racism and obstacles upheld by privilege. We can be about telling the story of Jesus and his radical love. We can live the gospel without dehumanizing and discriminating against one another or defacing God's creation. We can be great in the greater Northwest. We can and we will. All the best to you as you serve and make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. The ways in which we give our gifts and the ways in which we show up every single day. I think these are ways in which we answer the Spirit's call to love and to share grace in ways that are not always on our own terms but it is also the way in which we engage the work which our bishop was talking about. I almost cut the video off after the first two minutes, but I wanted you to know that there was a lot at General Conference, even if there were only a few things we talk about most in the news. Uh, there was a lot happening and the work continues. Pentecost, the Spirit gives us the gifts of the Spirit that empower us for the work. So let us in all the ways that we can live and give generously to make disciples of Jesus Christ. Would our ushers please come forward?
Holy God, we give thanks for this day. We give thanks for how you are still in our midst working through us. May these gifts we have offered go back always before you in the power of your name to bring forth the good news of praise of what your hope and promise can make possible. Do that with these gifts and with the fullness of our lives represented today. Amen. I invite you to be seated. Continue in a spirit of prayer. These are the prayers of our community this morning, one that went out earlier this week, continued prayers for Tom and Mary Ayers' neighbors as they are expecting a child in July and having complications. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Carolyn, can you say this name? I'm having trouble reading it. Sacapano, is that Dave? Tom. Dan, thank you. Okay. Dan Sacapano, who's very ill and in the hospital. We keep Dan and those who care for him in prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, on this Pentecost day, we remember the ways in which your spirit is so expansive and how it works in the world. So when we sing, walk with me and I will walk with you, we remember that we are called to walk with each other, but also in an expansive community, perhaps with those we have not yet known. As we walk with others, let us remember how to stay connected in community, to know that we are not all of one mind. We are not all of one experience of one language. And yet in Pentecost, you bless all that is diverse and beautiful. Help us to do the same with kindness with openness, with patience, with mercy, and with grace. Lord, we pray for your church universal around the world in the multitude of ways in which people gather to worship. Let all of it be a witness of praise. And Lord, we pray in, this, in the story of Acts when spirit comes, there are those who do not hear it. We pray that you would make us patient, persistent. When we are those who do not hear, we pray that you would keep speaking and working in our lives. And when we are those who speak your words but feel like they are not received, give us the courage to keep speaking. And above all, help us to relate to one another with love, for in that you are always revealed. We pray for all those whose lives are bound up in addiction. In the story, we sometimes chuckle at the questions, well, what is this? Are they just drunk? And yet addictions are not laughing matters that grip our lives. For all the ways that addiction can take its hold upon us through various forms and substances, we pray that your spirit would work release. We pray for community that would companion through the dark days when it seems there can be nothing else. We pray for the hope that is always promised of new life, just waiting to meet us and receive us. 
for all the ways in which we are crying out for new life, Lord. For those who are ill that we have lifted into your care. For those prayers we keep in the silence of our hearts, unwilling, unready to name them out loud. Lord, receive them. Let the wind of new life already be moving. Let new breath already be coming to enter within us. And when it comes, let us breathe deeply. Let us give thanks for the community who walks alongside us as we go confidently in the hope of your kingdom come. And as we pray now confidently in the hope of the prayer Christ taught us in whatever words or language it is most familiar to us when we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us join in our closing hymn, Amigos de Cristo, or Friends of the Lord. Let us sing it together as friends. Let us rise and sing. Let us go this day in peace and in joy. Let us go to know that there are other friends of the Lord who we are still just waiting to know.
That is the Spirit's work in our midst. Let us go with joy, with patience, with mercy and compassion and love. Amen.